think I've got to open the windows for this one. Ready? <laughs> Get in, you need to experience this. Get in right now. Let's do it. <laughs> hey Jacob. Hey Matt. How are ya? Good, how are you? Oh, I'm doing pretty damn well because behind me is the all new Ford Ranger Raptor. This thing is mind blowing. Hell yeah. It's finally, finally what we've been asking for, which is the Ranger Raptor with an actually powerful engine. On bloody steroids. On steroids. So today we're gonna kind of go through everything that you need to know about this. We're gonna talk about the good, the bad, and the absolutely f wild, because this isn't an ordinary car, right? This is probably the craziest, coolest car we've reviewed this year. Big claim, but you're gonna see why. So, is this thing worth just over 90,000 Australian dollars drive away? And Jacob, how the hell should the people finance their next car? Driver! Yeah, that's right. You gotta go down to the description below or click the link in the pinned comment. If you use my link, you get a $150 fuel card for every settled loan. Driver is a fintech startup that's on the consumer side. I absolutely wholeheartedly believe in them, hence we've partnered with them. You can get the absolute best financing deals from the biggest lenders pre-approved in two minutes. That's wild and you can be saving yourself a huge load of money as well so definitely click the link get your fuel card buy one of these let's get into it okay we got to talk about the looks of this thing because it is just bonkers now jacob we just came out of the, the ford everest that was in sedona orange this is called code orange and my god is it stunning? It's the hero color for the Ford Ranger Raptor. And yeah, I feel like a bit of a hero standing next to it. Actually, to be honest, I feel like a very small man because frankly, this thing is a beefcake. So what are the changes? Well, first of all, it's wider. It's so wide. I can only describe it as masculine. I really like it. You've got a very cool Ford badge in here. That's different. That's exclusive to the Ford Ranger Raptor, though no doubt everyone in their Ranger is just going to change it to that anyway. You've got your C-clamp design headlights here. Again, we've got to invert the B-roll here, so it actually looks like a C on this side. You've also got Matrix LEDs. They're pretty cool. Performance LEDs, they call them. They blank out part of their beams for oncoming traffic, so you can keep your high beams on and not dazzle other drivers. Really nice to have, especially on open country roads. You've got what looks to be a bash plate, but that's just plastic. But you do have your recovery tow hooks there. Good to have, especially if you get bogged though. It's pretty hard to get bogged in one of these. And then down the bottom, you have a true steel bash plate. So yes, you can take this thing off-roading, whack a rock. It's not gonna damage the internals. You don't wanna damage the internals of this baby, all right? and we'll show you why soon. Let's talk about the side. Let's do it. Okay, so coming to the side, now I love these. These are 17 inch wheels, exactly the size of alloys you would want on this, because then you get to have these huge BF Goodridge all-terrain tires, and boy, are these things really good off-road, even straight from the factory. I really like the design of them too, Jake. Looks really nice. It looks very rugged. Very rugged indeed. You can also option beadlock wheels to this as well if you are so inclined. Up top, you have some fake air vents, some more fake air vents here as well. Under here, you have a 360 camera. This has one of the best 360 cameras on any ute ever, so very nice. Keyless entry and go as well. Also, the door handles on the inside are a bit weird, but that's all right, because they work fine. On the side, you get metal side steps, which are really nice to have as well. They've got the Raptor logo in them too. By the way, you'll see this kind of black plastic cladding all around. It really helps to make this car even wider. And boy, again, the stance of this thing is, it's, it's frankly scary. This is, a, this is a scary car. Probably what they were going for. You've also got privacy glass here, AKA factory tinted windows. That's nice to have. Now, if we come to the side, apart from this giant Raptor decal, and yes, you can option more decals if you are so inclined, you'll notice that there isn't a step here like you'll find in the standard Ranger. I remember when I went to the Ford Ranger launch, they were kind of going on and on about how, how good it was to have this step here because you know people are, were usually just going up onto the tire. 
Well, because this thing has massive dual exhaust, you can't actually have a cutout in here for your feet, and therefore, you don't have a, a sidestep. Not a big deal, but I just remember them kind of talking about it so much, and now it's not here, so, a bit weird. That's all right, let's come to the back. And then coming to the big, fat, juicy bedonk of the Ford Ranger Raptor, there's quite a lot going on here as well. So, Raptor badge there, I really like it, it's so cool. You've also got the Ford badge there, nothing too exciting with that. Ranger has been embossed into the bodywork. You've also got these really nice tail lights. I think they're one of the best looking in the entire ute industry, but hey, that's just me. Here, you've got another little step. You've also got a tow bar. Now, here's one of the biggest issues with the Ford Ranger Raptor. Yes, this thing has a super duper powerful engine, but because it's got coiled suspension in the back, it means that this thing has a towing rating of 2,500 kilos, which is 1,000 kilos less than a standard Ranger. I'm sure you can do some sort of GVM upgrade to be able to tow heavier things, but then you're kind of just ruining it, as you'll see when you're driving in off-road. You don't really want to mess with the suspension on one of these things, I don't think, anyway. So yes, if you want to do serious towing, you're going to want to just get a standard Ranger or the Everest, because, yeah, this one is down. It's also down in another way. So if we open this up, by the way, ultralight tailgate, really like that too. In the back here, you actually get a lower capacity as well. So it's about 710 kilograms as opposed to the one ton rating that you'll find in the other ranges or thereabouts. So yes, you can't quite load as much. It's definitely less of a tradies car than the standard ranger, but as you'll see, you can absolutely forgive that. So let's get into the back the annoying way. Ugh. Now, once you're here, you'll see just how big it is. The space back here is actually pretty good. So it's 1,540 millimeters long. You have 1,200 millimeters between the arches, and that means that you can fit a Euro pallet back here if that's important to you. Let me step down and show you these other cool features. Ah! This thing is really high up. So you get a spray in bed liner as standard, that's nice. You've got a ruler here, which is pretty cool. You've also got space here for clamps on both sides. You can also have a bevy with your friends. You've got cup holders in there. And the other really cool thing is over here, you have a 12 volt socket. In other markets, they actually get a full household plug, but Australian design regulations mean that you can't actually get that. So that's a bit of a shame. Love that though, that is so light. Let's talk about the interior. Okay, so the interior. As soon as I got into this, Jacob, from the Ford Everest, I just thought, like, I'm in a completely different car. It looks pretty damn wild. You've got these red, oh, sorry, these code orange accents all around the interior to match the code orange paint. You've got this Alcantara look, but it feels more like a, a wetsuit material. I kind of like it. You've also got this weird hexagonal pattern going on there. Like a Lamborghini. Like a Lamborghini. And everywhere you touch is nice. You really go searching for it though. You will find your scratchy plastics, but regardless, it feels like a superior place to be. I like that word now, I think. The steering wheel. This is probably the reason why I thought it was so different. This is absolutely insane. You have a really thick, nice leather steering wheel. Feels super sporty. Love the Raptor badge down the bottom. You got a dead ahead stripe there. So in your peripheral, you can see where the steering is when you're gapping Ford XR6 turbos. Ooh, can't wait to see that. Or not. You've also got these. ASMR worthy magnesium paddle shifters, not the stupid buttons you get on every other Ford Ranger or Everest. Uh, you do still have to put it into manual mode using that, but that's fine. These feel so nice to use, just thick, thick and juicy. Can't get off the steering wheel yet because you can do a lot of things from here that you can't in other cars. So because this is the Raptor, it is the performance version. You have a whole bunch of buttons here. You can change the steering feel. You can make it heavier or lighter. You can change the suspension feel between comfort, sport, and off-road, where the off-road just makes it a lot softer, as you'll see when we take this thing off-road, and you've got the exhaust button down here where you can go between quiet, normal, sport, and Baja. Baja is not allowed. Not allowed for any use other than off-road. And Jacob, we, we definitely haven't just kept it in Baja mode the entire time. <laughs> totally. It's 
pretty damn awesome. Other differences, these Raptor seats here, they are leather accented anyway, whatever that means. You've also got suede on them and some code orange piping and accents all around the seat. Love the Raptor badge up there as well. And Jacob, how comfortable are these seats? Incredible. Incredible. They Luxury. are so nice. We have spent hours in this car and it, like no sore back, which is what you would expect, but also you can't expect that in every car. Of course, if you've been in the Ranger or the Everest, a lot of things are going to be familiar. For example, this 12.3 inch tablet here. It is enormous. It is actually pretty responsive. It takes a second to kind of get going, but once it does, it's very good. It does have wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, which I love to see. Something that not a lot of people are going to love is some of the air conditioning controls are in the screen themselves. For example, for the heated seats, no cooled seats, which kind of sucks, but hey, maybe that's, that's, a, that's a different point. But down the bottom, you do have these physical controls here, which are very easy to use. And really, you can control most of the functions using these regardless. So it's not a big deal. Also, the screen has a bunch of off-road specific things, which we will get back into when we take this thing off-roading. In terms of storage, it is again very good. Got a little storage area up there. You've got more storage down there. You've got a little storage area in between as well, which is rubberized as well, so things just won't come flying at you. You've also got a couple of cup holders in the center, a wireless charger, a USB-C port and a USB-A port, some more storage up front, some more storage in front of the cup holders, and then the door bins are a pretty decent size, not huge, but they're fine. But of course, this has a hidden trick, being a ute, it can't not. You've got hidden cup holders, on both sides, so that's pretty damn cool. It sits in front of the vent, so if it's a hot day, it'll keep your drinks cool. If it's a cold day, it will keep them warm. That's what you want. I really like this, Jacob. It feels like a jet fighter up here because you have these auxiliary switches. It's just really cool because it means that if you have accessories, for example, a light bar, it just hooks up into one of these. You flick a switch, you're good to go. Built in, I really like that feature too. Then up ahead of you, you do get a massive digital instrument cluster bigger than what you'll find in any of the other ranges. And while I really like it, and it's actually very easy to use, and it shows a bunch of information on it, it has had a few glitches with it. Now, this is an early production unit, and they usually iron these kinds of things out, especially with software updates. But like, I've had graphics kind of just stuck. To be fair, they looked really cool, but stuck on the screen itself. So yeah, but minor complaint because it works 99% of the time and I really like it. Other things as well, you've got a nice padded center armrest with heaps of storage within there. You've got your drive mode selector here. Now this has more drive modes than you'll find in any other Ranger or Everest. So we have normal, sport, slippery, mud and ruts, which turns on the four wheel drive system if you don't have it on. You've also got sand, Baja. And what happens when you change between those modes is it changes the traction control system. It also changes whether the dampening is in off-road mode, engine response, throttle response, traction control, bunch of different things. I think I mentioned traction control twice. Doesn't do traction control twice. I don't know, man. There's a lot to get through here, but it's pretty damn awesome. It's fully loaded. Fully loaded. And honestly, like for 10 grand more than the Everest Sport, which isn't even top of the range, like if you don't have like six children, this is the way to go. I mean, it's a beast. It is a beast, and you'll see that later in the video. This thing is nuts. Let's talk about the back seats. The Raptor is really cool, but at the end of the day, it's still a ute. It needs to be able to do ute stuff, and it definitely can. So pull that, you lift up the seats, hook it up there, then you get some underfloor storage where you can hide your little packages, if you know what I mean. Put that down. You can also, of course, pull down the seats and then you get a bit of flatter storage if that's what you need. You've also got a subwoofer here. Yes, this thing has a massive Bungan Olufsen sound system. Sounds awesome too. You've also got your jacking kit back there as well. And there is a little Easter egg with the original Ranger logo back there. So that's pretty cool. Let's get in though. Pretty easy to get in when you have this grab handle. I'm five foot 10, I sit really weirdly far back. Heaps of leg room, heaps of toe room too, and plenty of headroom there as well. Close the door, bit of scratchy material, so not the nicest, but that's okay. You do get a couple of air vents though, a USB-C port and a USB-A port, matte pockets here. You've also got the nice leather accented seats back here with that Alcantara bit as well. It is a really comfy place to be. So your kids are gonna feel pretty royal back here. You've also got a center armrest, which weirdly you've got to really pull. 
I don't know why, but you do have a couple of cup holders in there, so that's nice, and again, nice leather there too. Feels super premium in here, man. Basically a luxury ute. Yeah, until you see the engine. That's performance, let's talk about it. Okay, so here is what we've all been waiting for. The last Range Raptor was a super capable car, I mean it still is, but the two liter four cylinder bi-turbo diesel left a lot to be desired. It didn't feel like a true Ford performance car, at least in any sort of power output way. This is very different. This is, this is very different. So we have a six cylinder petrol engine, and this isn't just naturally aspirated, this is turbocharged. Puts out 292 kilowatt of power, 583 newton meters of torque. That is a stupid amount of power for a car like this. It is also connected up to a permanent four wheel drive system. That means that it is rear wheel drive bias, but will send power to the front when needed on paved roads, that's really good. And it is made it to a 10 speed automatic, which is less good. But we'll talk about that in just a second. We've also got another Easter egg here, by the way. Built Ford Tough, that's cool. They're kind of dotted all around the car. Jacob, let's launch it. Oh yeah. Dude, we've done, wow! We've done 2,345.6 kilometers. Oh, because of the numbers yeah. ascending. That deserves a firm handshake. Nice. So Ford claimed that this will do zero to 100 in 5.7 seconds. What do you reckon it's gonna do? What'd you say, 5.7? Yeah. Are you serious? Yeah. I reckon it's gonna do 5.9. I was gonna be my guess. I'm gonna go ah. 5.8. Okay. That seems like a cop out. You can't go Excuse 0.1. Excuse! You can't go 0.1 you. off from me. Excuse you. You cheat in this game regularly. Apologize. Fist me, fist me hard. Engine turned off, that's all right. Let's brake boost launch it, baby. Oh, grip. Ah! Ah! <laughs> to be fair, that was my original guess. You know what? I win again. You win again. I win again. I'm getting better. By lying. You cheat, you, you're deceptive. Frankly, I believe that's called fraud. 5.88, guys, in case you were wondering. All right, let's just, let's just do something else. All right, friend, let's just do a normal takeoff. I don't believe you. Jesus! This is why I have trust issues. May I say, Baha? Haha. Ha. Ha. Ba -ha. That's not even Baha exhaust. Right? It's not even Baha exhaust. Let's just uh, let's just comment on uh, what's different about this, right? Versus a standard Ranger or the last Ranger Raptor. Um, everything? Pretty much. It. It's almost entirely different. The contents of my underpants? <laughs> the same. The previous Raptor was an amazing on-road car, right? It was really, really comfy. It, it felt great. But the big elephant in the room, apart from me, lol, was the, was the engine, right? It just, you know, it was kind of like, well, it's a, it's a two liter bi-turbo, like it's pretty good. This though, it has been That's raining, scary. so let's be a bit careful. It's just like an entirely different beast. Oh. oh my god, I can't believe we're in a ute right now. I can't believe we're in a two ton ute. And it feels huge, man. This thing has a 10 centimeter wider track, actually 11 centimeters yeah. than a standard Ranger. And look what we can do. That is unreal. Oh my God. We can also configure how we want it to be. So I've got Raptor mode here, right? Which puts everything into sport mode, except for the exhaust, which then goes into uh, Baja mode, which is off-road use only, okay? So let's turn it off. Beep boop, beep boop, beep boop. All right, it's off. It's off now. Good. <laughs> the exhaust gets louder. The suspension stiffens up. The steering becomes nice and heavy. Sounds awesome, doesn't it? You know it? what? Very minimal body roll too. Yeah, I know, right? Like, this is incredible. These Fox shocks are pretty amazing. 
You can't take a corner too hard because it's heavy. It's heavy and it will understeer. Oh, that was a bit of oversteer. <laughs> and you can lock both diffs. Oh my god. Oh, oh man. Oh, oh my. Oh. Yeah, understeer. It understeers galore. Oh. <laughs> This is so much fun. I want to drive. It's quite tail happy. You'll get your op. You'll get your op. Oh. <laughs> Bro. You cannot keep it in line. Dude. This is great. Also, like, traction is, is on. We're on full traction oh, now. Yeah. If I turn it off, I reckon oh, no, we'd lose we're it. Done. I reckon we're we'd lose it. Over that fence. I will say, I don't know if I love the 10 speed auto. Like, it's, it's good, but it's not like unbelievably good. I feel like it could do with something with a few less gears. Sometimes, especially at lower speeds, it just likes to search. Having said that, when you're at these higher speeds, you don't really care. Oh, guess where we are, friend? We're already at Saucy Corner, tickle, and I'm terrified. Tickle my pickle. I'm terrified too. We're gonna do a bit of a brake boost launch. Oh. Oh. I think people can hear us from a mile away. Yeah, let's do it. Gotta be so way. careful here. Oh, oh, my, oh my god. god. <laughs> Never seen you so oh <laughs> We've got all terrain tires on right now as well. Okay. Oh. The other thing which I'm just I'm almost I can't remember everything because I'm just so having so much fun here. Okay. This thing has the permanent all-wheel drive. As you can see, it is very much rear-wheel drive bias, uh, and you can very easily uh, fishtail this thing out. It is uh, a lot of fun, but just keep that in mind. It will send power to the front wheels when it needs to, when it notices that kind of slip, but they've obviously done things with the traction here to let the rear end go out just a little bit, right? They've had a lot of fun with this one, I think. Yeah, a lot of this fun. Is great. I think that it's got what it needs now, mm. and that is the engine. They have done a bang up job with this powertrain. No, it's not like the fastest thing in the world. Like it's quick, right? Actually, it, just it's, builds. It's, it keeps building. That's what it is. It feels almost unnaturally quick. It's not going to like break your neck quick, but it feels fast. It's definitely uh, normal people fast, I would say. And if you're getting out of the old Ranger Raptor and you get into this, it's almost an entirely different experience. It is wicked. The other thing I forgot to mention is the steering. It has bespoke tuning for its steering. Not only that, it's actually got a better motor for the steering itself, and that means that it just feels entirely different. Like, we came out of the Everest uh, into this, oh. and nine day difference. Oh yeah. And I think, honestly man, I almost think this is more comfortable than the Everest. Really? It's definitely more comfortable than a Ranger, normal Ranger, mm -hmm. and I think it's more comfortable than, than the, the Everest. Everest. Well. It sits atop its class. Should we pull it one more time? Yes. Let's put it into manual mode. Lock it in there. Eddie. Third gear. Let's go. Oh. Bit of a delay and upshift there. Oh. Jeez, Unreal. <laughs> you can feel the weight when you start braking. Yeah. Okay, so now we're gonna take this thing off-roading. It's gonna be light off-roading, but it'll give you a taste of what this thing is like because this is the ultimate off-roader. We have Bob the drone, he's up there. Hey Bob, new operator. Gonna take out Jacob's job. This thing is a serious off-roader, if you couldn't tell just by looking at it. It's got a 32 degree approach angle. It's got a ramp breakover angle of 24 degrees and a departure angle of 24 degrees. If you have the tow ball, if you don't, it's 27 degrees. That's pretty damn good. It's also got a huge amount of ground clearance, 272 millimeters, even stock standard. This thing is a really good off-roader straight from the factory. So let's show you some of the drive modes and some of the things you can do on the inside. So let's put the car into one of its off-road modes. That starts from mud and ruts. We have sand, we have Baja, which I'll show you in a moment, and we have rock crawl. So if you change it, it does actually change the full drive automatically. So for example, in rock crawl, we put the car into neutral and it activates the low range transfer case. Of course, this has a low range transfer case. It helps you stay within the peak torque band, even if you're going slower. So that's really good if you need to rock crawl, for example. We've also got an off-road screen here. If we press this button, we can see a bunch of things here. You can see it's also locked the rear diff. We 
can also lock the front diff if we want. We don't really need either of those. So I'm gonna turn those off for now. We are in low range though, and safety first. Let's put on our seatbelt. I really wanna test the angles that this thing can get to. It's about as good as we can get around here anyway. Uh, because this thing can get to some pretty extreme angles and we're gonna put it through its faces. So, so we can see our angles here or we can get a view out the front as well. Let's do that because I don't wanna go into the dam itself. Okay, so again, this should be pretty simple, but, and it doesn't look like it, but these are some relatively decent angles we are getting at here. Oh, it is doing it with a lot of uh, grace and ease, quite like that. Of course, that was gonna be easy. Next one, perhaps not. So this is what really gonna test the uh, angles that we can get to in the new Ranger Raptor. So let's go back to this screen here, and then we can see all the different angles we want to be at. So one of the major benefits of having a Ranger Raptor is that you get those Fox shocks. Oh God, this feels a lot more extreme than it probably looks. 17 degrees, it's not a huge angle, but it feels pretty gnarly. And of course that does it with ease as well. So the other thing is if we press this button here, we can put on trail control. That'll keep us at a set speed, I think up to about 30 something kilometers, which is pretty good. And we just adjust it using the cruise control. So for example, if I want to keep it at an oddly specific two and a half kilometers an hour, as it goes down this hill, take my foot off and it will just crawl over all of this stuff for me. Boah. It feels like a decent angle. Yeah, that's impressive. I like that a lot. Pretty simple stuff, but when you take a proper, proper off-roading, all of this, all of these systems, they just come in so handy. Now, this is the part that I've been waiting for, and that is putting the car into Baja mode. It puts the suspension into off-road mode, which is the softer setting, so it gives you the most wheel articulation puts the exhaust as loud as possible and gives you your off-road steering tune. And as we drive past Jacob, hopefully we give uh, a hell of a fright or at least it sounds great regardless. In fact, I think I gotta open the windows for this one. Ready? <laughs> oh, that is a lot of fun. I need Jacob in here to experience that with me. Oh, if only I had the opportunity to jump this thing, I think I'd have a blast. Get in, you need to experience this. <laughs> Get in right now. Let's do it. Oh. <laughs> Oh my God, that is next level. <laughs> so usually Jacob, you and I, we film the final thoughts on the same day that we have the car for efficiency sake, things like that. I think we were so excited uh, in the Ford Ranger Raptor review that I just thought, hey, let's take a week off and really digest our thoughts. Uh, here are my thoughts. Holy f <laughs> that thing is just, it's just wild. You know, I've gone from one Ford product to another. Here's the PSST review coming soon. And my mind is still blown. I still think about how we tore up that track, the paddock. <laughs> I had multiple dreams about that during the week. And the car was awesome through all of it. Yes, it's 90 grand. I don't think that's much money for what you get. It is so exciting. Uh, it is so cool to drive. The interior is awesome. The exterior looks so mean. Yes, it's down on load capacity, but you know what you're buying if you're buying a Ford Ranger Raptor, and that is insanity. But let me know what you guys think of the all new Ford Ranger Raptor. How cool is it? Oh, it's the best. It's the best. Subscribe to the channel if you are new. We'd love to have you around. Definitely share this video with a friend. It really helps the channel out there too. And also, if you're going to be buying one of these or any other car, really, definitely click the link in the description below and use the driver service. It will save you a buck and a half and a lot more than that, frankly. I just think it's illegal for me to say what the, the average savings is. But let me tell you, it's huge. Thank you guys very much for watching. Ciao for now. Bye-bye.